What's up guys, CP Mod here back with another video. Now it is no secret that I make videos here on the channel. If I didn't make videos and if you didn't know about it, well, then you wouldn't be watching this one. But anyway, my point being, I do make quite a few videos here and also too on the side when I'm not studying or when I'm not making videos here, I'm shooting stock video just like this kind of shot or I'm doing client work and all that creates a whole lot of data. On top of that, a lot of you guys do ask me, what do I do with all the footage that I record? Do I delete it all? Do I keep it? Do I keep the good ones, delete some bad ones? What do I do with all my data? Well, rather than answering those questions individually in the comment sections, I thought, why not put together a full video to show you exactly what my storage setup is. From the server to my desktop setup, today we're going to go through everything that I do run and all the drives that I do have. So if you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, chances are you would have seen a number of storage products. From the WD Elements drives that have been building up kind of behind me all over the place to things like the Drobo video that we did do, there has been quite a number of storage type devices that have been coming to the channel and all of that kind of just piled up for my storage setup here today. So with that being said, well, let's go ahead and actually take a look first and foremost over at the server side. So for my particular storage setup, I have my local storage, which is here in the studio where I do all my editing and that kind of stuff, but also too, I have a server setup. This is what serves the house and also to other devices that I do use and also do has my internet connected devices for my own private cloud so I can access my data anywhere. Now, speaking of cloud, we will get to it in just a moment, but as you will see in just just a second, uh, my entire storage setup is much like the Backblaze approach. Rather than having specifically NAS and server types of drives, you'll see that I actually just have general consumer ones, but I use a ton of redundancy and a ton of backups to achieve the reliability you would expect from more higher end and NAS drives. So again, first and foremost, let's take a look over at the storage side. So in terms of the server itself, it is inside of this box, which is definitely not a rack mounted unit, but we do find ourselves four, four terabyte WD red drives. Now I did just mention that I'm using consumer drives, but this is the only set of WD red drives other than the couple in my desktop that I use that are actually rated for the job. Now the reason why I do run four terabyte WD red drives in the server is because this used to be my main redundant storage. It's running Windows Server 2012 R2 and it is in a storage pool for some level of redundancy. Sure, it's not the greatest and the proper RAID setup would be best, but it is what it is. Now again, that server itself is powered by an Intel Celeron with 16 gigabytes of RAM and running Windows Server 2012 R2. So for all intents and purposes, it isn't the world's most powerful server. It just runs a couple VMs, one for storage and one for management. But overall, it does get the job done and I'm really impressed with what it does have here. Not to mention, it's also to running the Seagate Barracuda 1TB drive that we featured in that video right there, where we wanted to see how long a Seagate Barracuda drive would last, so I'm using it as the C drive. So sure, not exactly everything in this guy is server grade, but it hasn't failed me yet and actually isn't too bad. So inside that guy used to be my full redundant storage, now it's just kind of second to my main redundant storage, and we'll get to what my main redundant storage is in just a moment. Then attached up to the server, that's not all that we have going on here. Moving over, we can see right here as I've lined up, which isn't usually this well presented, but we have six 4TB WD Elements drives. These guys are all full. So yeah, we kind of got a bit of a problem there, but either way, they are making up a total of 24 terabytes of storage that are all just raw data. There's no redundancy between them. They're basically just plugged in via USB 3 hubs and all that kind of stuff. And they use Backblaze as their redundancy solution. So for example, if one of these drives were to die, all I need to do is jump down to the shop, grab another four terabyte drive, plug it in, download the data from that particular drive of Backblaze, and I'm basically all good to go. So for me, I'm not too concerned about these WD drives sort of dying. I mean, sure, they're not really spun up a whole lot, so they're not really used too heavily, but uh, if they do happen to die, I do have full redundant backups of them, making it a not too bad solution. So with that being said, we have 32 or so terabytes of addressable storage and a total of 41 terabytes in that kind of cluster of the server connected drives. So we have 41 terabytes over at the drive. Again, only 32 of which are addressable, thanks to the fact that I I am running some level of redundancy there, meaning we do lose out a little bit of storage drives. Then jumping over to my desktop is where we find the bulk of my storage. Well, I say bulk of my storage, but it's only a little bit more than 41 terabytes of storage. And taking a look behind my right hand side monitor, we'll notice some very similar WD Elements drives. I seem to have a thing with WD Elements drives. 
I just buy them all up. They look really nice and once you buy like five of them, it kind of looks really nice and uniform if you just have all of the exact same drives lined up. So we have six WD4 terabyte elements drives back here, as well as a single Seagate expansion drive also, and a Drobo with five WD Blue four terabyte drives. All of these things are running consumer drives from the Seagate Barracuda drive in that Seagate drive to WD Blues in just about everything else, giving me a grand total of around 48 terabytes of external drives on my desk. Then with that being said, I also do have some internal storage in my PC. I also do have a WD black 4TB drive for my scratch media, so if I'm editing a video just like this one, all the proxy files that are created for this video, so for example, the footage you're watching right now isn't what I actually edit. I create proxy files so they're really nice and lightweight on the computer, and then when it comes to the final export, I use the original footage. So all the proxy files get dumped onto a WD black 4TB drive, and also too, for any kind of um, projects that I'm working on that I don't really want to have over the network, for example, they might just be really large files, or I want the speed of SATA, I also do have two WD Red 2TB drives for internal projects, bringing the internal storage up to a fairly decent amount of storage there. Then finally sitting on top of these drives is another two WD Elements drives. Now I recently just picked up these two guys and that's why they're not sitting down the back with the uh, other external drives and that's why I almost forgot to even mention them. I bought them two days ago now three days ago. Either way, really, really recently, and I've just been deploying them out, sticking the labels on them and that kind of stuff. They're one of my latest set of drives, and they're basically being put in as we speak. They're sitting over there, just, I guess, replicating some data. I can't remember exactly what I've got them set to, but they are there for a little bit of redundancy, even though they're not actually redundant drives. I'm just copying some data onto them for a bit of redundancy there. So, overall, I don't exactly know where I'm going to put these drives. I don't want to leave them on top of my computer, but as we can see in this shot, I don't exactly have a whole ton of room over behind my monitors and I don't have long enough USB cords to get to the other side of my desk. Now not including the few 120 gig SSDs that I have for boot drives and the occasional bits and pieces here and there, I do have around 64 terabytes of data that is on my desk and including my desktop setup of which about 56 terabytes can be addressed thanks to the fact that the Drobo has some really nice redundancy. Now I did mention before that my server used to be my main redundant drive that has actually been replaced since I got the Drobo as it has some really sweet redundancy features. On my server I only had one drive of redundancy whereas over on the Drobo I have two drives and it is super easy to rebuild data. On the server I have to do a whole bunch of stuff manually if I want to rebuild data whereas on the Drobo I put the new drive in, leave it for a couple hours, maybe a day, and everything is back up and running. So for me, my main redundant files from things like the intro and the outro and any assets that I've created for the channel and also to other projects I work on all get stored up on the Drobo. It isn't necessarily for, uh, red, uh, for raw kind of video. So the video you're watching right now will be stored on things like the WD Elements drives that we've been showing off for quite a bit of time and uh, any other drives here and there. But nothing in terms of raw video goes onto that Drobo because it is mainly just for very, very important files and documents and that kind of stuff. So a little bit overkill for super important stuff, but definitely really nice to have a large array of storage. And sure, I'm using inexpensive WD Blue drives in that Drobo, but again, thanks to the fact that the Drobo has some really nice redundancy and also to thanks to the fact that I have it backed up to Backblaze, even if the entire RAID array was to die with that Drobo, I can still download all my files, so it's not too much of an issue there. So I guess once you add up all that storage of actual raw data, I have about 105 terabytes worth of drives. And what exactly am I storing on them? Well, as you mentioned, I do have some important projects and stuff, but a lot of the storage is taken up with footage out of this camera. Thanks to the fact that Panasonic has recently dropped their new 400 megabit update, uh, it is really, really large in terms of file sizes. So any B-roll we do, I shoot all in 400 megabits. Any kind of A shot like this, I leave it just in standard 150, 200 megabit mode because let's face it, there's not exactly a whole lot of moving stuff. So for example, all the data up in this corner, if my arm wasn't moving here, would just be the same, so compression would be a lot easier there, but uh, when it comes to B-roll and some really nice footage, all of that is shot in 400 megabits, and that thing chews through storage like there is no tomorrow. Not to mention, I do get in from time to time a Blackmagic Cinema camera, the 4K edition. It's a little bit older nowadays, but it is still a very nice and very capable camera, and I do use that for a bit of shooting here and there. So that does bring up a lot of storage. And as for how much I've filled, I've filled about 66 terabytes as of my last calculation. 
calculation, give or so, give or take about a terabyte or so. I haven't exactly worked it out fully, but it's around that 66 to 67, maybe 65 if I'm over calculating, uh, amount of storage actually used. So uh, it is getting a little bit on the full side. So no, it is not all empty, it is getting full, and uh, I would really love some new storage solutions. And I think I calculated by about 2020, I'll have over 200 terabytes uh, worth of storage filled at the current fill rate that I have. So hopefully storage prices go down, larger drivers, uh, larger drives rather come out and uh, I don't spend too much on external drives. And for those of you who are wondering whether I'm mining on these empty drives, unfortunately, no, I'm not. I was really close to actually setting up a whole bunch of mining, but I just didn't find myself having the time to set up the mining, doing any management and getting all that going. And for me, the power bill would be more expensive than how much I'm actually making back as seeing that 60 some terabytes are actually used. So I don't exactly have a whole ton of drives to make back the money that I'm spending. Not to mention when I'm not using these drives, they're actually all spun down. So not all of these drives are plugged in and turned on 24 hours, seven days a week. All of the ones on my server out there because they're basically full at this point are all off. As of the time of recording right now this very second they're off and chances are by the time you're watching this video they're also too off anytime I do need to access some data I flip the power board they all turn back on and I grab my data off and then shut them all back down I mainly do this just to save uh, the up uh, just to save the motors rather not use up too many cycles on them and just keep the usage down on them so they do last longer because again at the end of the day they are consumer drives rather than dedicated storage devices now I guess then the final and follow-up question that I do get is why didn't I just build a server. I mean, I've spent all this money on external drives, some internal ones. Why don't I just build a 105 terabyte server? And my answer is pretty simple. Cost. $15,000 to get an entry level server to give me about 105 terabytes of storage or closer to $20,000 uh, 20, for the 105 uh, terabytes with the data. Sure, you could be able to do it for a little bit less, but for full enterprise drives and also to proper server equipment, you're looking at a lot of money being spent on these kinds of setups. And for me, in the past four years, collecting up all these drives as I have not bought them all in one go, I've spent just a fraction of how much I would spend on a 105 terabyte server. Not to mention it is fully modular. If I want to add more storage, I just go to the shops and buy some more hard drives, plug them in and hey, I have more storage. I hook them up to Backblaze and now I have full redundancy there. If a system needs to be updated, I don't have all my access to my data lost because the server's doing an update. I can just unplug the drive, carry it over to my other computer, plug it in and continue with what I'm doing. Not to mention if I'm also do on the go, it allows me just to take a slice of that data with me and go wherever I'm going. If I'm going to to something like an event and I need to have on-site storage, I just pick up three or four of my drives, take them with me to the event, and then, hey, now I have part of my storage array with me. And it's actually a really nice thing and I've been able to manage it really, really well. But with that being said, if you are looking at setting up your own storage solution, I really do not recommend this kind of solution. Sure, it's easy to accumulate a lot of storage over time, it is pretty cost-effective and it is easy to move around, but it is a nightmare when it comes to searching for and looking for files. I really wish I could create a massive pool and just have all my raw data in there so everything could just be indexed very easily, but unfortunately I just don't have that, which is a little bit of a limitation of my particular setup. And not to mention, if you've been counting and kind of keeping a track of how many drives I actually have, you'll notice that I have more drives and drive letters, so for me, I can't assign all the drives to one computer because Windows will just run out of drive letters. On the Mac side, it's a little bit different, but Macs are kind of a little bit different there. So for me, on my desktop PC, it's kind of a whole kind of unplug and replug situation because I've used up all the drive letters. In fact, there was a time when I plugged in one of my uh, SD cards from the cameras and it wasn't showing up and I could not realize why it wasn't showing up until I realized letters A through Z on the drive letters were all used up, which is a little bit of a disappointment. But at the end of the day, it is still a decent enough setup. And all in all, that is my storage setup. Again, not the world's most best and optimized storage setup, but for what it is, and for someone who doesn't want to drop $20,000 every couple of years or so, it is a really great and inexpensive way to get a lot of storage, but without spending a really big amount of money. Again, I do use a service that is Backblaze to go ahead and make sure there's a ton of redundancy. So every drive that you did see here today has a backed up copy of it. It's all sitting up in Backblaze, so if the drive was 
to die, even though it's a consumer drive, I just download it all and all my data is back, so it isn't too much of a bad situation. But with that being said, guys, if you want to pick up some of these WD Elements drives that I have too many of, let me know, or rather find that down in that description box, and let me know down in that comment section what drives and storage solutions do you use for your desktop setup. Let me know, I'll be really interested to see. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.